Graham probably asked 20 questions before we even started today, and they were all over the map. The amount of curiosity that he has, and then his courage to even come forth and ask the questions is a trait that um, I wish I could have embodied more when I was a younger coach. From the other side, the second part, is there something you do now that five years ago you would have disagreed with? Oh, just getting a visit from Graham today. We trained, we just finished up training. He's always game to just do whatever I say, which is awesome. I appreciate that about anybody who comes into this gym and is just open and willing to just do whatever. Uh, it's like the leaving space to learn and to try new things and to maybe get out of your comfort zone. It's one of my favorite and oftentimes most uncomfortable things about going into new spaces is like, I'm gonna get to learn, but I'm probably gonna have to do something that I'm not super happy or comfortable doing and that's just gonna help me grow and stretch, but there's always a little bit of fear. I mean, we've already, we've already trained together once before, so I don't know if Graham had a lot of fear coming in today. Well, any man who's reached his late thirties with a great head of hair, literally so much hair, he has to have specific products to hold it up. <laughs> That's something I'm gonna listen to. So I, I don't know if it'll, you know, sprout these puppies back in the next 10 years, but you know, I, I mean, seriously, he's got a ponytail. As a true fanboy, someone I grew up watching him on TV and being able to like see that stuff, it's like a dream come true. But uh, it was, <laughs> Uh, one of my people who works with me, I uh, texted her, I was like, she's a huge cross with her and her husband. She goes, I'm like about to go work, I'll call you later, I'm about to work out in Marcusville. She goes, what's it like living my dream life? And I'm like, eh, a lot of traffic to get over here, but <laughs> it was great. No, it's, it's fantastic, because it's like, I think there's something called like embodied knowledge. So there's just stuff that you know that you don't necessarily have words for, but you can put into physical action. And so when you're around someone who's obviously achieved mastery of a certain type of movement, I mean, 25 years of, of training and moving and, and thinking about it, like, you don't get that kind of experience just by watching on, let's say, a screen or by just reading a book. It's like being around that. There's the essence of like how he moves, how he breathes, how he associates with his body when he gets fatigued. It's just great. So like I'm a better person after these sessions. So it's good, especially once I got the, the toes to ring. Those were tough. I was like doing the first one, like flopping around like a fish. He's like, just put your feet behind you. I'm like, oh, OK. And so before I jump into what we did, I will say this that having Graham here makes me feel aged a little bit. <laughs> I'm 10 years older than him. And not Graham has done a considerable amount of work on his body, on his fitness, in his athletic career, and as a coach. So he's no like newbie to this whole scene. Yet, he comes in to any new environment, and this is something that's really unique about him, and it's something that up and coming athletes and trainers and coaches should think about. Graham probably asked 20 questions before we even started today and they were all over the map. It's just like the, the amount of curiosity and, that he has and then his, I don't know, call it courage to even come forth and ask the questions and to just not care that he doesn't know the answers but just be like, I'm here to learn. That is a trait that um, I wish I could have embodied more when I was a younger coach because I would get around people that I looked up to, mentors, people that I, I was starstruck by and be afraid to ask the question because I didn't want to be the guy that didn't know. And none of us know <laughs> a whole lot of anything except for what we've experienced. And the only way to get faster knowledge than your life experiences allow for is to ask other people those questions. So just a tip for, for anybody that caught wind of some of the questions that he was asking in our content. That's the thing that I think everyone's fighting that. against. How do we just build, get people to do hypertrophy work? Okay, so you're thinking, if I can get people to have more lean mass on their frame, they're going to age better, especially with gym pop, burn more calories, be more metabolically fit throughout the day. So, but the intensity of the contraction, is that also trying to get them to learn their body? Because are you finding that people just don't have like a connection with these things? I, th I think, yeah, I think people generally don't have a good connection with what levels of effort produce results. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, that was hard. It's like, was it that hard? What does hard mean to what you? What does hard mean to you, you know? And Slightly more discomfortable than sit Yeah, if you, if you yeah. have an, and that's, I'm talking about like Gen Pop who has no competitive experience in sport because athletic experiences, competitive sports sort of teach people that, you know, you inevitably get pushed to your limit in some purposeful way or some, you know, like by accident in a game or whatever. And so you're like, oh, that was really physically challenging. So then you take that into the training world and you're like, oh, I know what it means to push yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So from the other side, the second part, is there something you do now that five years ago you would have disagreed with? Uh, like, or, I don't know, well, I'm, I'm not, yeah, yeah, definitely. 
Using a Smith machine. That's not the set, even though you have one. What are you doing over there? Um, I think for, yeah, it's like investigating more and more examples of how we can create stability and safety so people can execute contractions at a, at a high degree of effort. That's like, I mean, the stability of this, like I, this is a squat position that I would have a hard time getting into if I was just doing a barbell squat. So it, it sounds to me like you're understanding that for most people, you have less judgment around what they're doing. It's more that they're doing it and how they're experiencing it. So yeah. whatever barriers, okay, sure. It may not have to be this like super single leg balance functional setting, but it's like, if I can get you to feel this and to understand this, then I'm going to get you on the path. But like you're taking a step back further and further to keep people moving. That does that sound about right? I would say so. Yeah. And that, you know, yeah, there's a place for all the, all the other fun stuff. And like, there, if that's the goal, what I just outlined, then let's look at all the things that support that goal. And it might be people doing, you know, un unbalanced BOSU ball things. Yeah. Cause that just makes it, makes them have fun and want to do it over and yeah. over again. They're like, I'm hooked. I got to figure this out. Um, so just not turning my back on any method or any approach. Uh, but instead just sort of looking at it through the lens of how is this getting at the goal of, we need people to move against resistance yeah. more more frequently and at higher effort. Okay. That's yes. it. We jumped into a hot start right out of the gates. We were squatting today and doing some core work and some pulling. So we ran on the treadmill. We did some wall balls. I had the gall to ask Graham if he'd ever done a wall ball before. He was like, what do you, what do you think, I'm new? Uh, so. <laughs> it's like one of those things. It's like a wall ball is at this point, CrossFit's been around for like 13, 15 years. It's like, yes, I was a child of the nineties. Yes, I watched CrossFit, of course. It's like, there's a bear poop in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so we did some wall balls. We did some toes to rings. We did five rounds of that. It took us 12 minutes. <laughs> Breathing's up, legs are pumped upper body, like the pulling chain was ready. We we're ready to jump right into kind of our strength intensity for the day, which was uh, back squats, some stability on the Smith machine, elevated heels. This was a big quad dominant movement for me. I was feeling like I was fighting for leg extension with my quads every rep. And we superset that with supinated uh, lat pull downs. So squat pull combination. Um, and that was, that was eight sets of each. So we did 16 minutes back and forth kind of building up intensity. And then the final four sets for, for me were at kind of optimal working set intensity. So we got some quality volume in and then some intense volume. And then we moved into a strength balance piece, which was working on the Nordic hamstring curl. So we, that like knee, knee flexion dominant squat into the, you know, so quad dominant squat right into a hamstring dominant strength balance move to kind of work both sides of the joint. We did some uh, dumbbell rows. Uh, so a horizontal row to go with that kind of vertical plane row that we did uh, with the lat pull down. And then we finished with a conditioning piece. Graham's a big fan of this on the minute concept that just- I was about to say, every time I come here, he's you know, like, if there's one thing that you probably, I'm sure he talks about a lot. And if you watch these and you like, you get that, he does it. But it, just to under, uh, to highlight this, everything we're doing is on the minute. So there's none of this like, I'm asking questions, trying to slow them down or just like, there's none of that. It's like, hey, the clock's going, we got like five seconds left to get into it. So it just is such a great way to keep yourself paced, get a high volume of work and all this conditioning. You're getting a bunch of stuff just by letting the clock be the coach. So 
just so it doesn't skip over it. If you haven't thought about that, just give it a shot when you go in your workout, even just to warm up. It's like, I, I gotta do all this stuff. Like right, every minute I do a different exercise to go through that stuff. So like, just so it doesn't skip over that, that's, I, I'm a real big fan, but he, it's like, it's what he lives and breathes. So another thing you learn from the master. <laughs> I appreciate the the uh, that we slew, yeah we slowed down to talk about that the enthusiasm that he has for that format of training, and it's been such a, a p- part of what I've done for so long. Like um, now, doing an every minute on the minute format for weight training, if you're going to be setting powerlifting records and Olympic weightlifting records, is not necessarily optimal. Like you need to rest your nervous system and your muscles enough to produce the highest uh, like levels of muscle contraction and force possible. Um, what I find is that in resting really long periods of time, we obviously have to extend the amount of time we're in the gym. And when people come to me and, and my personal preferences, I wanna be able to build strength, but also work capacity, build my aerobic uh, capacity, aerobic endurance. And these formats of training where you kind of time your working sets and EMOM formats, supersets, it really adds a lot of uh, characteristic, you know, those characteristics to my fitness that I'm looking for. And I think people value when it comes to being efficient with how they move in their training sessions and, and in the gym. how you move your time. Like, you're not, yeah. you're not like, we got, I don't know, like 30 working sets probably, maybe 20, 25 total working sets. Like, that's a lot. And you just get it done. And it's really valuable for, like I said, 80, 80% of people out there, it's a great thing to start working on and thinking about. So we, that's how we also finished our conditioning format. We did another EMOM. We had three stations this time. Two of the movements were really breathing and kind of like sustained grind grunt work. We sled push, we did rowing, um, and then the last one was just sort of a posterior shoulder, rear delt isolation, upper back isolation, after we had done some big compound, you know, upper body pulling exercises. So I think we kind of hit everything with functional bodybuilding today. You know, we got a hot start, warm up, we did intensity supersets, we worked on some strength balance, and then we finished with a conditioning piece that incorporated a little isolation, some breathing and some grunt work. And now we're just kind of cooling down, stretching um, and recapping on what we learned uh, and you know how the experience went, which you know for, for those of you who get to train with other people and you get to be around the people that you care about, that you love, your tribe, your team, when you're in the gym, when you're in the garage working out, you know, a, a recap at the end is often the best feeling ever is just, God, I got all the endorphins going. Let's just talk about whatever's on our mind and share something you know, something valuable, something that you care about. It could be about training, it could be about life, it could be about how I met my wife, it could be about girlfriends, it could be about, you know, driving across the country, all the things that we talked about today. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and be sure to check out Graham over on his handles. Check him in the description below.